Hi there, welcome back in the studio. This video is brought to you by Gospel Beats at gospelbeats.com. This is episode 2 of the Mixing with Q10 series. We're trying to mix a whole song just with the Q10 plugin from Waves. And we're also sharing a cool beginner's EQing technique, the four band or three band EQing technique. This is episode 2, so if you haven't already, um, go check the first episode on the channel. And um, we're covering the guitar package here today. So let's see what this sounds like. Pretty straightforward groove here. We have a main rhythmic drive from the heavy guitar. Then we have kind of a rhythmic reinforcement with the plaid guitar with a little bit of slap back echo. Then we have a classic uh, guitar pick stroke with a little bit of distortion. So nothing crazy going on. We have a main guitar and then two uh, auxiliary guitars, I would say. Now, let me grab just all the EQs I've used. I've used a small instance of the Q10, which is the Q3. Actually, you have a Q1 as well, just for basic filtering. Uh, this is the most basic uh, instance for multiband uh, EQing. With guitars, you most of the time just want to go very easy. So as you can see here, I have filters, OK? An enhancement zone here at the top for the heavy guitar, OK? A attenuation zone at the 1K spot here. And then I have a um, gain zone, both in the plaque and the stroke guitar. So Basically, we're applying the same concept here. One thing is always true. We want to filter unwanted uh, subharmonics and low frequencies in general. So I went here as high as, what do we have here? It's almost 300, so it's 285 hertz of filtering, which is quite high, but you don't need that much low end in these guitars. Okay, so it's crucial that you start filtering um, the rumble zone because you don't have um, any information here. Let me just solo this track to uh, demonstrate to you what I'm saying. This is the plaque guitar. So this is basically a rhythmic reinforce with a little bit of slapback echo. There's too much bass here and we don't need an additional bass. We just need an additional um, Rainforce for the rhythm. So why don't we just filter that out? Okay. Too much. That's fine to me. I don't need the very low hand here. This is not a bass again. This is just a secondary uh, arrangement layer. And um, we use that to reinforce the rhythmic drive. Okay, it's just a color. It has to be there, but one of those tracks uh, you put in an arrangement just to help the structure. Okay, it doesn't make the song. It doesn't have to be in your face. You already have a bass, pretty rich bass, really. So you just want to add a color. And to your job is to make all the different bits and pieces of the song fit in the spectrum, okay? And you don't do that by adding sound most of the time. You do that by filtering. So the same idea goes for the high end, okay? There's not much stuff going on up here. There's almost no difference. Of course, you don't want to exaggerate. Okay, if you go back here and we go too far, this is not good. Go as far as you can with that. Because nothing much is going on here, but you're actually introducing useless frequencies in the spectrum. And you may 
not hear them at first, but they are actually affecting the overall balance of the project. Okay, if you just uh, go over that and you do that for like 20 tracks in a row and you ignore the problem, the problem is still going to be there. Okay, and you have 20 times the problem you had at the first track. So it's all about filtering, guys. If you're just starting out, but even if you're more of an experienced user, uh, you can benefit from these concepts. Filtering is crucial. Clarity is achieved by filtering. Okay, EQing is not by applying dramatic uh, gain increases. It's about uh, applying dramatic filtering, I would say. So just start your journey into the queuing world uh, with this idea in your mind. I have to get rid of the useless stuff. So if we go with the um, other EQings um, as well for the guitar, we have here, we have the heavy thing. Then we have the um, stroke guitar at the bottom. Okay. And it's pretty much the same thing. Okay. I was a little bit uh, more conservative, I would say, with stroke guitar because I want to preserve uh, its natural characteristics. Okay. Uh, these two tracks here are more digital sounding to me. And the stroke guitar, on the other hand, was much more natural sounding. So I wanted to preserve a little bit of the character. So you'll see that the central part of the spectrum is pretty much untouched. I just add a little bit of um, attack here. I can be even a little bit more precise here. Around the 2K, just the area uh, which you usually have the attack of the pick. Okay, So I wanted to preserve a little bit of clarity. But as far as filtering is concerned, I went pretty hard on that. So we're filtering out a lot of unneeded stuff. This is true all the time for the bass. You can go very high. And sometimes, or a lot of times, I would say, it's true for the high end as well. So you may think that you can't really touch uh, the high end on most sounds without losing their uh, natural characteristic. But experiment with that. You're going to be surprised on how much stuff you can actually discard without um, affecting the nature of the sound. Okay, you can go very far with that concept if you have uh, digital sounds or background sounds or rhythm enhancement stuff going on. You have to be a little bit more conservative with the natural sounding guitars, for instance, or acoustic instrument in general, but experiment with that and try to remove as much stuff as you can because you'll end up stacking clarity over clarity. I couldn't stress it enough, guys. It's just about that. So this is a typical setup for a three layer guitar package. So it's all about filtering the low end, filtering the unneeded high end, or enhancing a proper sounding high end, and then highlighting a couple of characteristics in the spectrum, which usually uh, is around the um, pick attack area. Okay, I did this for the stroke guitar, pick highlight area, and then here at the plug guitar, the repetitive slapback eco guitar, I just wanted to add a little bit of body without touching the 1K zone. So I didn't do this because this could be dangerous. Okay, even though this is a super loud sound, but again, this is usually an attenuation um, area. Okay, so I wanted to preserve the characteristic of the sound and find my sweet spot here using the swipe technique. So th this thing. Okay, I found a sound that sounded good to me and try to make it fit in the mix. So that's about it, guys. That is your goal. You want to be stacking clarity once again. So at this point, you start to, to understand that actually EQing uh, is more about subtracting than about adding stuff. Okay, and that's the thing that makes you think. So if someone says EQing is about applying dramatic changes, he's lying. <laughs> he's not a sound engineer. He's not a pro by any means. Okay, most of the time you'll end up selecting the stuff you need because you want to stack clarity, you want to stack space. So guys, do your homework, practice with your guitars. This is a setup you can find in any average session. So we want to keep things real here like gospel beats. This is stuff you can work on. This is not a million dollar uh, super pop blockbuster uh, kind of session. This is a real world stuff. Grab a multi-track, record it, produce it, and then work on it with this philosophy.
and you eventually you get to a point uh, which you can um, mix pretty much anything with very little tools you don't need uh, expensive stuff you just need to find your preferred tools and to have some experience with basic EQing technique so guys do your homework that's it for today and thank you guys for having me drop a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel thank you again and I'll see you guys in the next video